So welcome to the second SPSS video. Um, last time we inputted some basic data and did a, a basic frequency analysis of what we had inputted. And we did that to keep things simple as we introduced SPSS to you. Um, most often than not, we're going to actually be using pre-established data sets in this class. Um, it was easier just to present a pretty simple data set to introduce SPSS. But today we're going to talk about the GSS, which is uh, a large social survey that's been going on in the US for the last 30 years and it's quite popular in fact because it gives uh, a nice representative picture of trends uh, in the US and so today we're just going to be looking at just what, what the data set looks like uh, we're going to be looking at the different viewing options um, with working with SPSS and GSS and we're going to do a basic analysis of the data set just to show a potential of this data source um, to get started, you just need to locate the GSS in your computer. It might be in the desktop or perhaps it's in, in the class file somewhere and just double click on it and it should launch SPSS and the data set at the same time. So it might take a second or two for your SPSS to load up, but once you load up, you'll see that there are many variables. Uh, I think there's approximately 1,200 variables um, in the GSS file that we have for this class. Uh, there might be more if you were to look at the entire data set. And if you look at the data view, uh, it's also pretty uh, elaborate. Uh, we have 1,200 questions, and you can see the computer's having a hard time even generating these numbers with question marks just because uh, it's a lot of data. 1,200 questions over something like 4,000 respondents. Um, if we had 30 years of data, you would imagine that would be a lot, lot larger data file. Um, so we're just using one wave just to keep things uh, simple and also reduces processing time. But uh, just like in our example, the same logic operates when we're looking at the data view. Here's a respondent, uh, and here are the answers that he gave on certain survey questions. And if you just lay your mouse over a particular question, you can SPSS will actually pop up the label for it. So this one is an abortion question. Um, I think all of these are kind of abortion questions. Uh, whether or not um, is or is abortion okay for any reason. Uh, and if you want to know what the response means in this particular situation, just like last time, we can click on this little dollar value labels quick button and you'll see that the actual values come up. So this person actually didn't answer this question, whereas respondent number two did say yes. Um, abortion is okay for any reason. Uh, this person said no and so forth. Uh, if we look at the variable view, it gives you more additional information about these variables and all of these variables, in fact. And so we have the name here, Abony, and we have the label that we knew of before. And I could make out what this variable meant uh, just by looking at it, but if I had doubt, I could actually look up um, these variables on the GSS website, and your TA can show you how to do that. You can download the PDF of the codebook, or you, there's even an interface where you can check these variables online, but you can make out what they mean. Uh, all of these first set of questions are about abortion, and in what circumstances are they okay or not okay, and we're basically looking at how Americans feel about this question on these different uh, dimensions. Is abortion okay for any reason? Is abortion okay if the pregnancy was the result of rape? Is abortion okay if the person's not married? And so forth. And the GSS has questions, you know, beyond abortion questions. And they just have questions about, you know, almost anything you can think of. Uh, things about gay marriage, things about uh, drug use, and so forth. And uh, if you want to look at how the responses are coded and what kind of responses are possible, um, many of them work like this, where 0 equals non-applied, 1 equals yes, 2 equals no, 8 means don't know, and 9 means not answered. Uh, this non-applied, uh, it's kind of a more methodological topic that we're not going to cover too much but basically the GSS not all the questions are asked of everybody uh, there's usually a, a random sub sampling within the GSS sample of who is asked this question so we typically don't want to analyze the people who weren't ans asked that particular question and so we usually kick them out of the analysis um, we'll talk about missing values but that's 
typically a missing value that we ignore. Um, and uh, other videos will show you how to determine what is missing and whether or not we should add. And so after we decided what variable we want to analyze, we just go to our analyze subtable and let's just run a basic descriptive and see how Americans feel about this abortion question. We're going to run a frequency. And uh, one of the things I noticed right away here is that instead of showing me the labels, or I'm sorry, the names of the variables, it's actually showing me the labels. Uh, last time we had the name shown. And this is a little bit tricky to figure out to find the particular variable that you want because, you know, we have 1,200 of them. Um, so sometimes it's better. Well, actually, I think it's always better to have the names here displayed. And that's just an option. Um, so I'm just going to cancel this and go to my option. And you might want to do this yourself. Uh, if you go to Edit and go down to the Option menu, you know, there's various different options you can have. But for variable list, I want the names and not the labels. So I'll click on OK. It's going to ask if I want this to be my default setting. I'm going to say yes. And you might need to do that every time, unfortunately. It depends uh, how these computers are saved. Uh, but now if you go to the frequencies, you see now that I have names instead of labels. I just move it over and click OK. Now, after you run your first analysis or your second analysis, your output is going to be in your output window, and you just need to click it open. Now, remember, um, the output doesn't exist until you actually run your first analysis, and then uh, it's going to pop up like this. But when you do other analyses, um, it's, it's going to remain just minimized. So you actually have to find it and open it up. And to get back to your data set, you just click on the data set down here. So anyway, so here is the output window, and it generated my analysis. And like last time, it's told me that this is the syntax command that it operated. And here is the question that was asked. Um, and uh, first, you can look here and just look at the valid and missing responses. And here, missing, you know, this is something that we designated as missing. Um, these are things that we kicked out of the analysis. And these are the two responses that are being considered valid, yes and no. And yes, you know, 784 people said yes, and around 1,100 said no. Uh, a straight percentage uh, consists of 17% said yes and 25% no. But this straight percentage includes the missing values as well. So as I was saying, not everybody's asked this question in the GSS. Um, people are randomly selected to answer this question and 55% of the people weren't asked this question so we shouldn't really include them in the analysis. Uh, similarly some people didn't answer the question at all and some people just didn't know. Um, you know some people could argue we should include this in the analysis but if we exclude it um, it gives us these valid percentages. The valid percentages is the percentage of the valid responses. So if we just include the yes and no's we have 40% uh, of Americans said yes abortion is okay for any reason and 60% said no. Uh, treating the GSS as a representative sample of the United States we could say that 40% um, of Americans uh, believe abortion is okay and 60% mean no. We can make that kind of inference um, using the GSS. Um, cumulative percentage doesn't really mean anything in this type of nominal uh, variable it's not continuous you know it's if we were looking at something like income then cumulative percentage might have been helpful um, you know now that we have a data set that includes many different types of questions we can investigate maybe if men and women answer this question differently or perhaps maybe people of different races answer this question differently or how income uh, mediates this relationship and because we have all these different sets of questions asked uh, we can include these other variables in the analyses. Um, it all depends what we think is our dependent or independent variable. And uh, if this was some kind of project where, where we're exploring how Americans think about abortion, you know, this would be our dependent variable. Uh, and then um, things like race, income, um, maybe number of kids, your religion, background, uh, those would all be our independent variable.